In recent years, a new term has been coined called big data, which essentially means hundreds of thousands or even millions of rows of data. It's vital that any data scientist, engineer, or analyst knows how to process this data quickly because this is the kind of data that most companies are dealing with nowadays. So you're the person that they need, and the tool they need you to use is Apache Spark, the modern solution for processing big data. If you don't know how to use Spark or even what it is, then I highly recommend you watch this video to the end. It's only going to take a few minutes of your time. Don't be intimidated and take it step by step. Don't get left behind. Today we're going to be using PySpark, the Python way of writing Spark code. A lot of people use it for many, many reasons. It's extremely popular. The downside for the Python version is it's a little bit slower to run, but it's still used heavily today, I promise you. Okay, let's get coding. Don't click away. It's going to be nice and simple, and it's going to really pay off. And if for some reason you're not subscribed to this YouTube channel, you probably should get on that as well. Okay, so here in our Python environment, we have access to Spark commands through the variable sc. So if I output sc for you, you can see it's basically this Spark context thing. So we'll use Spark or this sc thing very, very shortly. But for now, I'm going to make a Python list called nums. So I'll let nums equal the list of the range of 0 to 1 million and 1. And basically what that is, is nums is a Python list where the numbers are 0, 1, up until a million. So technically, it should have a million and one items if we look at it. Now, even though we're not using Spark yet, I can still use some of the Spark terminology. This list of numbers is actually what's on called the driver machine. And it's called driver because this is the machine that's going to tell the other ones what to do. And I know we haven't even talked about how there's other machines yet, but what Spark is going to do is distribute our data across these multiple machines or our cluster of machines, which is going to do the processing for us to speed it up. So cluster in general just means a group, but in the context of Spark and distributed computing, it means your group of machines that are dedicated to performing this task. And so for us, it's going to be processing our data in Spark. So the first thing we need to do is tell our cluster or Spark to distribute what data? Okay, and we're going to distribute this same Python list. Normally, you'd actually load from a file rather than doing what we're about to do because the whole point is working with really, really big data sets. But just for a simple example, we're going to use what's called parallelize, which is a Spark function that takes in a Python list and it distributes it into what's called an RDD, a resilient distributed data set. And the easiest way to explain it is right away with an example. So I'm going to go ahead and make a variable called numsRDD, which is equal to sc, so we're saying spark do something, parallelize, and this takes in a Python list, so I'm going to pass it nums, and then if I output numsRDD, we do have an RDD, okay? And notice when I output an RDD, it's not giving me the contents of that thing. And that's because we're distributing the data across our cluster of machines. This is our driver program here. This whole thing is our driver program saying, hey, Spark, distribute this data. It says, OK, I'll distribute it for you. And I'll give you back this RDD, which is just a variable with type RDD. It is a resilient distributed data set. And to us, it's really just something we can tell Spark to do whatever we really want to do with it. So maybe we do want to know what we distributed, and of course we already know because we just called it and we didn't actually do anything to it yet, but you can ask for what's in there with the collect method. So here, if I do numsrdd.collect, it returns a Python list of all the information. So this should be the exact same list as before, and it is. Now here, it's a very scary operation to do this, because all of this data is distributed across our cluster on many different machines. And so if it is a lot of data, like a million numbers, it's kind of scary to bring it all back to the driver machine. We don't want to do that. We want our processing to be done in parallel or distributed on our cluster. That's the whole point. So we're not going to do this most of the time. Of course, it'd be a bit of a disaster if we couldn't even look at what was in our distributed data set because how would we know how to do anything if we don't even know how it looks? You'd have to like keep track on paper how it looks. So what we can do instead of collect is call dot take. Okay, so if I do numsrdd.take, 
and that takes a number of how many things we want to take. It says right here, take the first num elements of the RDD. So let me take five of them. Now what that does is returns a Python list of the first five items. Okay, so I know this is kind of annoying how there's so many things up front that I had to say, but it's really important to understand so that now we can go ahead and do some interesting work. One thing you might want to do is apply some function to every element in the RDD. Every element be meaning each one of these numbers is one element. Okay, so maybe we wanted to square each element. What I can do is make this new RDD. So I can do squared nums RDD, make a variable called that, and then I will set that to a method call on our previous one. So we have nums RDD, and then we'll call map. Okay, and what that does is maps a function to every element in the RDD. And so we have to pass it a function. In Python, we can pass either a lambda function, which is basically a function without a name, or we can pass an actual function that has a name. A lot of the time when you're writing Spark code, you'll see that the functions are very, very small, and so we just write lambda functions like this. So this is a function that takes a parameter called x. So specifically, we have to pass map this function that takes in one parameter because what its job is doing is applying a function to each element. So what it's gonna do is one at a time, apply that function to each element. And so the function has to take in only one parameter, which will be that element. So the function that we want is x squared. We want to take in x and we want to return the square of x in Python. And if you're not familiar how to do that, I can show you that two asterisk asterisk two is four, two squared is four. So this, if this was three, then three squared is nine. Okay, so all I wanna return over here is x asterisk asterisk, that's a tough thing to say, squared, okay? So x squared. And so if I output this thing, remember dot take, that's uh, the only way to get useful information. If I take the top five, now it sure looks like everything's been squared, great. So right now our RDD is actually filled with just numbers. So every element is a number, but we are absolutely not restricted to that. We can make it a list or a tuple of items so that we can store extra information about an item in there. So maybe, for example, we could do each element along with how many digits the number is. Okay, so each element would actually be a pair or a tuple where the first item is that same number and the second item is the number of digits for that number. Watch how we can do that with the same function. So firstly, if you don't know in just in Python how you would get the number of digits for an integer, I could do it very simply like this, where if I had, say, 546, well, that's a number, but I could convert it to a string. So if I let that be the string, then it's, well, string of 546, and strings have a length. So if I ask what the length or the len of that string is, then it would be the number of digits. So this is what we're going to use here. So if you're listening right now, I strongly encourage you to try and think about the code yourself right now. We do actually have all the tools already to perform this task. Okay, but either way, I'm gonna go ahead and write it. So basically what we would do is just exactly the same as before. We would call this map function, except we would return the number and the string, the length of the string of the number as a pair. So I can do that by making a new variable called say, pairs is equal to squared nums rdd, so our previous rdd, then I still want to map, and I'll take in a function that takes in a parameter, and I want to return the pair of two items, so it's going to be just two things where the first one is x itself, so that's the number, and then the same thing as before, the length of the string of x. Okay, and then if I do pairs dot take maybe a little more, 25, and clearly we have the number of digits along with the squared numbers. So as you've seen, map is awesome. You're gonna be using it all the time to perform transformations on your data, but it doesn't do everything. One thing it doesn't do is remove things from your RDD. So maybe there's stuff in here that we don't want. Maybe we only want the numbers that have an even number of digits. We can remove the numbers that have an odd number of digits or equivalently keep the numbers that have an even number of digits with the function filter. Okay, so here I have this RDD called pairs 
And what I can do is very similarly to map, I'm going to call pairs, sorry, I'm not going to call this pairs, I'll say even digit pairs, even digit pairs is equal to pairs dot filter, okay, and now what this does is takes a function that takes in a parameter, but this time it returns a true or false, and it's going to be true, or at least we want it to be true, if we want to keep the element, and we want it to be false if we don't want to keep the element. So what we're going to do is pass in a function that takes in a parameter, and what it does is, remember x is a tuple right now, it's a pair, so x0 is the digit, or sorry, x0 is the number, and x1 is the number of digits, so what we want to do is return x sub 1, which is referring to the number of digits, if that mod 2, okay, so we divide that by 2, take the remainder, if that mod 2 is equal equal to 0, that would return true, and that would mean it has an even number of digits, and that is the ones that we want. So if I return this thing, even digit pairs dot take, say, 25, here you go. We have these numbers that have 2, we have these numbers that have 4, and so on. Doesn't output everything for us, the first 25. So filter and map are both awesome. You can do whatever you want to each element, and you can remove or keep whatever you actually want. But what it doesn't do is any sort of grouping like information. So you see here, clearly we have a group here where they're all twos, and we have a group here where they're all fours. This is going to come up very, very often for stuff like aggregation, like averages, minimum, maximum, poor group. They're very important. So to finish this lecture off, and hopefully it's been awesome so far, we're just going to do it one more function, really. To finish it off, we're going to group all of the like information, so all the 2s will be a group, all the 4s will be a group, all the 6s will be a group, and suppose that we wanted to compute the average for each group. So we would want only a few elements, we want one average for the 2s, we want one average for the 4s, one average for the 6s, and so on. So to do that, we first actually need to flip this thing so that the group is the first item in the list. This is because Spark often has the notion of key value pairs, where the key would be what we'd be grouping on, and the value is whatever information we're considering. So I'm going to do this next part quick. I encourage you to try. If not, that's okay. Don't worry about it. But right now, we just need to flip each element in the list, or in the RDD. And so to do that, I would make it, basically just call it flipped pairs is equal to whatever our previous was. So even digit pairs, let me just copy paste that name. So let that equal to even digit pairs dot map the function that takes in this parameter. And what it does is really just flips it around. Okay, and if I output that, it should be just it flipped. And it is. So now we need to do the grouping. So a group by key, because for each key, we want to have all of the items beside that key. We don't want it in these different items. We want it to have one key for all of the same ones and then all of the values in one item. So I would do that by calling group by key. Okay, so if I take this previous one, flipped pairs, then I'll say grouped is equal to that previous RGD dot group by key. And then I don't have to pass it anything because it's just going to group them by key. And let me show you what that produces. You see, it takes a while, and that's because grouping is actually a much harder operation than the map and the filter. But right now, it did group it. So we have this key, which is the number of digits, and then all of the items. And I know you don't see all of the items. That's because PySpark does this irritating thing. So let me quickly fix that up for you so you can see it. Grouped, I'm just going to overwrite the variable. Grouped is equal to itself dot map lambda x, so it's a pair, where the first item, so I'll keep that the same, and then I just want to convert this other thing to a list. And you can see what this thing is, and it's going to be huge, so I'm not going to take very much, in fact I'll only take one item. So what it does do, actually let me take a couple so you can see it. Okay, so you can see the first one is the numbers that have two digits, all right there, and then you have the numbers that have four digits, all right there, and that list is going to be pretty big. So now that we've successfully grouped the information, 
we can actually do our average and we know we can just map the sum of all of these elements and divide by the length of that and that will do our average. So if we have this thing called grouped, then I can say averaged is equal to grouped dot map, give it this function. And the first thing we want to keep it exactly the same because that's our, our key, our number of digits. So let's keep that the same. And then let's produce the average, which we can just do the sum of the list, which is x1, and then divide, it's getting a little weird with the brackets here, I gotta not mess this up, divide by the length of x1. Okay, that looks like that matches up. And if we do averaged, we should be able to collect this information because we're only gonna have a few and I'll show you why. So here, we only have at most 12 digits. And so guess the numbers are getting pretty big at this point. Here's our huge average, but here you go. For each of the even numbered digits, we took their average and returned it. And it's fine to collect that because we only have one, two, three, four, five, six informations. So that's how it's gonna flow is that you input something that you're not gonna to wanna to collect immediately, but then often after a bunch of transformations, then you might be able to collect it later. Although this is great, it actually was a very slow way to do what we just did because we grouped all of the information using a group by key. If you want to get the full explanation as to why this was the wrong thing to do and what is a right and better way to do, watch my whole hour long tutorial on Spark where we're gonna talk about a little more about what's going on under the hood so that we can write better programs. Now I'm going to complete this with saying, if you wanna watch Spark in action, then go ahead and watch my final data science project where I use Spark to solve a real world problem. People loved it, it's very interesting, so I'll link that above, check it out. Now I'll catch you next time. Thanks so much for watching.